What's up guys, inside this video, we're taking a look at the color mixer tool inside of Lightroom, the brand new section that has replaced the HSL panel and why it is so incredibly important and just became the most powerful tool inside of all of Lightroom. So I'm excited to get into it. We're gonna hit some really practical examples, show you some uses for this you probably haven't even thought of and why it's so much better than the HSL panel that it replaced. All right, let's get into it, hit that intro. All right, so we're gonna waste no time. We're gonna get started together with a beautiful shot right over here, showing you exactly what this color mixer panel is all about. Now, the latest Adobe update for Lightroom came out with three different things. It came out with this color mixer panel. It came out with the lens blur, which is an early access, super slow kind of thing that adds blur to your lenses. And it came out with an HDR mode. Now, we're not gonna worry about the lens blur or the HDR mode because to be honest, they're really, really like small use cases that you're probably not gonna find much use for. And right now, lens blur, super, super slow. But what is really Really exciting is this color mixer panel. And at first glance, it's gonna look like pretty much exactly the same thing that you had before with your, with your HSL panel. In fact, they've even kept that here in this adjustment slider here. But you've also got this new thing called point color. Now point color is really, really exciting once you get under the hood. A few Lightroom Update videos I've already watched have talked about this and said, ah, oh, it's pretty much the same thing. It's not that useful, not that exciting. I disagree and here's why. Because this point color actually gives you basically the entire HSL panel inside of your adjustment layers. So let me show you really quick. We're gonna hit K on our keyboard. We're gonna go up here to select background. So I've selected my background. And before, if I wanted to do HSL adjustments, let's say I wanted to adjust the blues in a photo, I would have had to adjust all the blues, whether it's blues on a shirt I'm wearing, whether it's the blues in the sky, whether it's the blues on this beautiful lake right here. Now I can do this section by section and apply it wherever I want. So let me show you how it works. I'm gonna select with our dropper, any color inside of the background selection we just made. So let's select the sky. Now, if you go to visualize range, Lightroom is really handily gonna make everything black and white that is not being selected. So anything blue is being selected here. And you've got three different uh, kind of abilities within this selection. You can change your hue, your saturation, and your luminance, just like the old HSL panel, except for now we have it in an adjustment layer. That's the first thing that is obviously really exciting and really helpful because now we can change local colors without having to worry about changing the entire image. So I can make the blues a lot darker. I can change the hue to match this blue jacket I've got on, I can add a lot of saturation and pop. I'm not saying that looks good. <laughs> We're gonna have to work on that. But now we can actually go individually and make some adjustments. So let's look at some practical uses for this. So first off, let's take a look at our sky and our background separately. I'm just gonna reset this image. I'm gonna go up here to my select sky tool and hit select sky. All right, I've got my sky selected. And let's say I just want my sky to be a bit more of this teal dark glacier blue that we've got here from this Spirit Island shoot. I'm gonna go up here with my dropper and select the sky. And from here, I can obviously go in and match it, make it more of a teal blue, drop the saturation a bit, and I can even make the sky a little darker if I wanna get a little bit more punch out of it. All right, so just like that, I've gone in, I've made an adjustment to the sky, it matches a little bit more with this lake. So I didn't have to worry about a global adjustment. Super, super handy. Here's another issue we have in this particular photo. You can see that my hands, for whatever reason, are super, super red, probably because it was so cold outside. Well, I can go in here, Go into create new mask, select objects and just select the two people in this photo. Good, I don't have to be super precise because now I'm gonna use this dropper. Go in here and select the hands. Now, if I go visualize range, you're gonna see the rest of me gets blackened out. <laughs> We're just gonna take the saturation, drop it and the hue, we can adjust it here. Okay, so, so far, so good, very powerful tool, but you're probably wondering, okay, other than that, what else can I use this for? Because it's still pretty similar to the HSL panel. That's where you'd be wrong because you haven't actually dug a little bit deeper. So let me show you a really dramatic example. So I've got this portrait here of this lovely lady and we have just a basic background, basic portrait, not much going on. What I hate about this photo, <laughs> straight up is the fact that the background is very similar in color to our subject. So she just blends in with the background. She doesn't pop. And I wanna add some pop, right? Some juice, some flavor. So what I'm gonna do is go into my HSL panel and I'm going to adjust, let's say this background, the old fashioned way. So let's go to my hue and Obviously, as I try and make an adjustment to the background, I can't because it's going to adjust the skin tones. So this is really, really handy now. Anywhere that you would have previously been adjusting skin tones while adjusting the background, you can now separate those two things by combining it with an adjustment layer. So we're gonna hit K on the keyboard, go up here to create mask and go up here to select background. Now, if you're on the normal Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic, you would just hit the B key on your keyboard for brush and that'll give you the same panel. All right, so now I've got that background selected. I can go in here, select my oranges. 
and I can adjust the hue. So I can change that and she pops off the background a lot more than she did two seconds ago. Now what's so crazy about this that a lot of people aren't really realizing is you can actually stack these effects. So normally in the HS pan HSL panel, you used to have an issue where it's like, okay, I can adjust the hue this much to the right or this much to the left, and that's it. That's all I can do with that color. Other than that, I'm kind of SOL. Well, with this new point color mode, what people don't realize is you can switch this. Let's go all the way to green, let's say. Grab my eyedropper tool, and you can do this with multiple colors in your selection. So I'm gonna select this same area again, the area that was previously yellow and is now kind of a gross vomit green. Select that and do the same thing. Hue shift, bam. Select it, do the same thing. Hue shift, bam. Select it, same thing. Okay, and we can only take this so far before it's going to fall apart, but my point is, now you can make these dramatic changes to colors where you couldn't before because you can push them as far as you want. You can just stack them, just like that. And we're gonna try and blend this by grabbing these other colors and doing something similar. The only limitation that you're gonna see in a second here is you can only do up to eight colors at a time per selection. So let's just say, hypothetically, we found we wanted to blend this Right, and we can go in here, we can adjust this saturation down a little bit. And this guy, this green, we need to make brighter. Saturation down, we're gonna try and blend it together a little bit more. And the range is just how much color kind of spectrum it's going to absorb. So if you have your range way up, it's going to grab green and a little bit on either side of the color that you selected. If you bring your range down, it's only gonna grab just that one color that you selected. So we're going to have our range all the way up to try and blend it. Okay, so obviously this isn't looking great, but look how far we've come with our background. Now, I bet you if I were to go in here to my background mask and get out of this tone <laughs> tone selection and go down here into my effects, bring my texture down, my clarity down, and my dehaze down, you're gonna get some weird color going on and it's gonna do all sorts of things. But now I've got this really cool kind of purple background. I'm gonna bring our highlights up and our whites up and our shadows down. So look at this, here's before. And here's after, inside a Lightroom with zero adjustments. Like how crazy is that, that I didn't have to go into Photoshop. I made some adjustments, but I didn't have to go into Photoshop and I've separated her so much more nicely from the background. And what's crazier still is now I can take this mask and hypothetically, I can actually go in here and just duplicate it. And those effects are going to be duplicated and I can go in to that same point color back here and we can adjust these colors again and take them that much farther, right? So we can go in here and grab our purple. And of course, we're gonna have to delete some of these. So let's go in here, grab this purple. We can adjust the saturation up or down, luminance. So we can kind of do this for infinity until we get these incredible transformations that just weren't possible in Lightroom before. Like, that's amazing. If it's been helpful for you so far, do me a favor, let me know in the comments, where do you see this kind of applying to your editing? What kind of issues do you see that I'm not seeing because I'm really excited about this update? And it's weird to me that nobody else seems to be talking about it. They're just saying, ah, oh, it's kind of a little bit of a build on of the HSL panel. I think it's a complete rewrite because now you can apply it in so many more ways that you couldn't before. So let's look at some more practical examples, kind of like we talked about before. I've got this beautiful monkey. His name is Monkey. And uh, we were hanging out in Bali, got this little shot, and we're going to just apply a basic preset. Cool. That looks all right. Now, I do want to separate my monkey from the background a little bit. And just like we did before, um, sometimes your eye <laughs> gets a little bit confused when it's looking at a photo because you've got multiple colors kind of repeating themselves. So one of the best ways that you can do uh, to kind of direct the eye is to increase the contrast, either in the saturation of the color, the luminance of the color, the hue of the color. And that's what the HSL panel is so good for, but it's limited. So my monkey here has a bright orange face, or at least he will in two seconds, <laughs> in theory. Okay, so let's go tone. We're gonna bring up our highlights and our whites just to brighten Mr. Monkey a little bit. And then color, let's adjust him slightly. Okay, there's something funky with my monkey. But for now, we're just gonna <laughs> go on with that. All right, now, Mr. Monkey would probably stand out a lot more if I got rid of kind of the oranges and the reds in the background of this forest. So we can go in here, go select background. I'm trying to be fast because I wanna show you a lot of really practical examples here. I'm gonna go to point color. I'm gonna select this orange-ness turn my range all the way up, and then just take our saturation down. So here's before and here's after. Okay, not so much going on right now, but we can repeat this process as many times as we want. So we'll just bring our saturation down on that stick, bring the saturation down, I don't know, on the leaves or bring the luminance down. And now Mr. Monkey is really popping in a way he wasn't before. Let me show you a more practical example. We've got a nice wedding photo here. I'm just gonna add one of my 
natural presets. So pretty decent photo, but I find greens in general kind of make me want to puke. Um, typically, I would have had to go in here to my HSL and I would have had to grab the saturation and take it down in the greens and the yellows. Now this is all fine and dandy and gives us some nice separation. However, the issue is we lose all of the nice green and blue and stuff on his little boutonniere thing here. So what if we ignore that, go to point color, and do the exact same thing with select background. So we're gonna wait for Adobe to catch up. I'm gonna make my background a little bit darker. Maybe bring the contrast down a little bit. And then I'm gonna to go to my point color and we're just gonna take our saturation down in these greens. And now we're gonna get a really nice, beautiful, soft kind of color palette in behind them instead of that harsh green we had before. I no longer want to throw up, so how great is that? And of course we can adjust things like his skin tone. So he's got red on his skin. And if I were to go in here to my HSL panel, color mixer and bring the red down. That might fix his skin, but I don't necessarily want to get it out of the entire image. So by using this very selectively, we can go in here, go select objects to select his face. Good. And grab kind of this red area of his skin. Take the saturation down a little bit. Maybe even take the luminance down. And we can even play with the tone of the skin. So if you ever want to match skin tones between two people in a photo, this is a great way to do it. So we can take his skin less towards red and more towards kind of a orange. Take the saturation back up. And it's going to feel hopefully a little bit better. So there's before and there's after. So you can use it for little subtle things as well as big things. And obviously that might be your taste. That might not be your taste. It's just a matter of like, wow. How many more things can we do now? Give me a thumbs up in the comments, in the comments. Give me a thumbs up in the thumbs and a comment in the comments if you're seeing the power in this and if you're going to update or if you're like, yeah, you know what, Ryan, you're making too big of a deal about this. I am open to either. All right, so we're gonna apply a basic preset. I think I already had one on there. Lower the exposure a little bit. So this is me hanging out on the road to Jasper and I am actually modeling a jacket for a specific brand. <laughs> I have my favorite cool guy pose on. Okay, so I want this jacket to be a little bit more saturated, let's say. So I can saturate the jacket, that's good. And now we can actually go in here and adjust the oranges and the reds of this photo to make those trees pop without making my skin just look like a confetti party. So I'm gonna go in here, go to my color mixer. First, we'll just select our background. Wait for it. There we go, kind of. I'm gonna go subtract object just to make sure Lightroom knows we don't want this in the photo. Okay, we're gonna go to point color. We're gonna grab our oranges and we're gonna say, bam, saturate and bam, make them more red. And bam, add a little bit of a lift. Now, of course, we're gonna have to blend things because these greens look a little weird as well, so we can change them. And I am not gonna nail it in this two second really rushed situation because now I've gone like extremely too far. So this can be overdone as well. And you're gonna find there are some colors Lightroom won't actually respond to because it says that there's just not enough color there. Um, but the beauty of this, as with all adjustment layers, is we can actually take this and say, okay, I took this way too far, but I still want a little bit of that without having to readjust all of these. Let's just take the amount slider down. And now we can adjust here's before, here's way too much, and let's find the sweet spot maybe around there. And of course, we can combine our HSL with all these other adjustments. So we can really make me pop in that photo, add a little bit of contrast perhaps. And let's say we wanna adjust these blues. Obviously, we just go down to our point color, grab that little dropper, our best friend, and we can adjust them. So if I want them to match the jacket a little bit better, let's try and find a color, I don't know, somewhere around there. Saturation up a little bit. Okay, so if you really like colorful poppy photos, here is before and here is after. Pretty quick, pretty simple, and so much better than what we were able to do before. Here's just a couple last ones. Let's take a look at this one. Here's another example of what I'm talking about with just really selecting local colors. We've got a beautiful sunset before and after. I've already kind of done like a basic edit on it. And the thing is, I actually would love to have a little bit more saturation in the sky, but as I take the reds up in the sky, you're gonna see one, there's banding happening here. And two, we've got way too much saturation in our foreground. So let's back this off. I'm going to Go up here to create new mask and go select sky. Of course, if you have my AI engine toolkit, you could just do all these sky effects just built in. But for this, we're gonna go there. We're gonna grab kind of our orange segment. And now we can play around and get really a bopping sunset colors. So let's take our saturation up. 
and you can play whatever color you want. And let's say that we want to go all the way to the extreme and we want to have a color that doesn't even exist in the rainbow. Well, we can do that too, just by grabbing our dropper, put on the same area again and take it even further and same area and take it even further. So you can use this stylistically. You can use this to ruin your photos. The sky is your oyster. <laughs> so let's just undo all that nonsense. But realistically, adding color, mm, this is amazing. So here's another example. We've got this couple here. And of course, our sunset and our background will be awesome with some more color. But our couple probably wouldn't benefit from having way too saturated color and looking like Oompa Loompas. So let's grab that background. Same exact thing. We're going to go up to point color. And we'll just add a little bit of a saturation boost in there. Saturation boost right there. And we can even try and blend it because we've got like a kind of bluish purple here. So if I wanted, I can maybe see if I can blend that more towards the orange end of the spectrum. We can also darken it down and our couple will just pop that much more. So here's before and here's after in just like three clicks. And we didn't mess up with skin tones. We didn't mess up the clothing. We didn't do anything because now we're using the HSL panel separate from the rest of the photo. Here's one last one just to see. Okay, so this is a nice one overlooking Joshua Tree National Park. And we're going to grab our sunset and do the exact same thing with our select sky. Go in here and grab our colors. Saturation up a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of blue saturation over here. And now we've done it just locally. We don't have to actually worry about the fact that the rest of the photo is going to get messed up and we'll screw up her skin tones. We can do one more mask. Go select object. Select this rock and hopefully Lightroom will do a decent job. Okay, we have the rock. <laughs> it's kind of selected her face a little bit. So normally I would actually go in here and clean this up a bit. But for the sake of this video, obviously we can go in here. We can adjust the saturation on our boulder, the color. Make it a little bit darker if we wanted. Sky is the limit. So here's before and here's after. Just add a little pop of color, just like that. You can do it in any direction you want. So hopefully this gives you a really good idea of just how effective the color mixer now is, whereas before the HSL panel was really limited to just making small adjustments. Now you can essentially make as many adjustments as you want. You can stack those adjustments. You can apply them to local areas of your image. And it's really, really powerful and going to incredibly speed up the way that I edit and just the ability I have when it comes to using Lightroom and avoiding Photoshop entirely. So I'm a big fan of this update. This Lightroom update was insane. If you think so too, do me a massive favor. If I brought some value to you, leave a comment below, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you want more awesome content like this. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next video. Create something awesome. Peace.